Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Maureen and Nyam is here with me. Well, we'll be taking a look at the newspaper headlines right away. Nigerians are calling for the evacuation of Nigerians trapped in war-torn Sudan. Mm. Uh, Sudan has become uh, the talk of the day and everybody is evacuating their people, but Nigeria is still dragging its feet according to how people see it. Yeah, we, we'll talk deeply later on that. Mental health is also an issue that we'll be taking a look at this morning. Well, starting with the Guardian, the rising poverty costs dumping uh, eSIM adoption. They'll also be off the press. That's just a teaser to tell you that they will be off the press. Uh, we'll be talking about what the newspaper headlines are for the day. And we'll be looking at the major newspapers, Punch, uh, Daily Trust, uh, the Nature newspaper, The Nation, and so many others. And we'll be having a guest in the house that will be uh, helping us to look or have an insight to some of the headlines on the newspaper this morning. Good morning once again. My name is Nyam Gul. Nyam Maring. My name is Igwe. Okay, uh, well, um, like we said, um, NLC is telling Buhari not to allow Nigerians in Sudan to die. It's, it's become a worrisome thing for a lot of people. We just saw the U.S. evacuated their people, mm -hmm. and so many other countries have, have evacuated their own people. Oh, yes, yeah, so many, so many, so many. U.S. has. Um, South Korea said it was sending military aircraft to evacuate citizens. Uh, 25 of the citizens yeah. in Sudan, they have just 25. The U.S. has evacuated all of their diplomats there, yeah. including their family members. Um, Saudi Arabia. Mm. You know, said it had evacuated 91 Saudi citizens from Port Sudan to Jeddah, along with 66 nationals uh, from several other friendly and brotherly countries. They helped other people. Yeah. And so we wonder why Nigeria has not been able to move its people, uh, her people from there. Uh, many have accused uh, the Nigerian government of being dangling and not, not uh, moving in from a point of strength. Mm. And, and Nigerian government keeps telling the people that they should stay indoors. That's what the advice they're giving the people who are in Sudan. And another worrisome thing that happened is that one of the people who lives there uh, in a trending uh, video said that um, uh, they are trying to enter Ethiopia, the neighboring Ethiopia. And every other citizen, every citizen of any other country is being allowed into Ethiopia except Nigerians. And so they're trying to see, um, the governments now said that they're, going, they're trying to see what can be done about that. So the question is, why will they not allow Nigeria? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Nigeria not um, pushing this from a point of strength. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw that report myself. I saw that video where Nigerian students there uh, resorted to self-help and tasking themselves $100 each. Mm -hmm. And... Um, People from Sudan, people from Lebanon, people from Kenya were all allowed to pass through that Khartoum mm -hmm. through yeah. um, Ethiopia to exit. But Nigerians were told to go back and apply for visa, which some of them said they had already applied for three days earlier. So why would Nigerians not be allowed to move out? And what does it take for Nigerian diplomats for... Uh, a, a foreign minister to call, put a call through yeah. to Sudan and say, let my people out. I, I just don't know why, why, well, maybe bureaucratic bottlenecks, maybe uh, whatever it is. But if other countries can do it, we should be able to do it as well. But now that we've seen that, apart from the fact that it's, uh, it's, it's a place everybody's trying to run away from, if other countries can have, um, you know, asylum or whatever you want to call it in the neighboring country and we can't, that means our case is even more urgent than any other country. And then our people are still there. Our people are there. And from what I gather today, there'll be blackout. Internet will be off. Mm -hmm. Electricity will be off. This is war we're talking about. And our people are there. The students are there. The business, Nigerian business people are there. And so it is important that the Nigerian government moves quickly. This is not one of those times. And we've seen that happen repeatedly, haven't we? Mm. When there are such crises where Nigerians need to be evacuated ASAP. Yes, yes. You find all these 
stories about, uh, well, Nigerians see them as excuses that shouldn't be because we should have been proactive yeah. in making sure that as other nations are moving their people out, Nigeria should be among the first countries to move her people out of such situations. But here we are. Although we, we, we from last night, we, we heard that um, that's from uh, Garba Shehu, uh, representing the federal government, that from between last night and today, mm -hmm. uh, Nigerians uh, will be evacuated safely from Sudan. So we hope to see that happen. Fortunately, today we'll be speaking with NEMA, uh, uh, an official of NEMA who yeah. will give us updates on what's happening. Uh, have our people been evacuated from last night? If not, how soon should they come out today? So we'll have answers to that later when we'll be interviewing an official of NEMA. Okay, uh, we also have, I don't know whether I'll, I'll say the news is gladdening news or, or sad news because in Imo State, the Commissioner of Police, you know, where he has ordered the prompt uh, an orderly room trial of uh, six police officers. These police officers were seen assaulting um, civilians using knives, which are not part of the weapons that the police are expected to use. Mm -hmm. And, you know, okay, I'm glad on the one hand that um, prompt action is being taken, but on the other hand, I'm sad that it even had to come up at all, because these are people that we need to run to. And if you cannot run to them and they are the ones that are assaulting you, then what hope do we have? It's really a pathetic thing. Yeah, it is, it is something to worry about because, as you have said, they are to secure us. But as we have seen, uh, police in Oweri have ordered the prompt orderly room trial of these mm -hmm. people. And these are the kind of actions we want to see. Deterrent actions. Mm -hmm. When these people are promptly dealt with, yeah. uh, promptly punished, then it will serve as deterrent to trigger happy uh, military officers or police officers to behave themselves, mm. especially when they are around civilians, unarmed civilians. Yes. You cannot be unarmed and then be afraid when you see a military personnel yeah. or a policeman who should be your friend, as we are told. Police are your friend. Yeah. Well, <laughs> friendship maybe has a diff different definition because of the things that have been going on. Yeah. And then it was also very heart-wrenching when we saw photographs of a woman sitting with a 15-month-old baby and the only the reason is that a stray bullet from an NSCDC operative got to the child 15 mm -hmm. months old baby who fired it's, it's, sporadically yeah. and how do you do that how many how many months ago we were still asking the federal government or they were still asking the federal government to arm them so that they can carry out their duties well now they are armed and then people are dying. You know, I saw that picture, Nyamgo, and, and you know, when you look at it and look at the face of the woman, she wasn't crying. She was sitting on the floor, holding her baby, mm. dead baby, <laughs> bathed in the baby's blood. And what you could just see is a woman in shock. Mm. She's still processing. In fact, she's not been able to process it as at that time the picture came out. And it is so saddening. We shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be at this we point. We thought be. we've seen it all with regards to recklessness. Well, good enough um, because that per kind of a person may go into depression and we don't know what is happening. Today is Mindset Monday and uh, we also are going to be talking with a mental health expert who will be talking to us about the need to do some of the things that we just neglect as Nigerians and all that. And we do hope that uh, everybody, everybody will get involved in, you know, trying to check their mental health, and not only your own, trying to be your brother's keeper as it is, your neighbor, be a neighbor to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you, there was, there was this, um, there's this one that is going on on social media. A lot of people have posted it. I don't know where they copied it. But someone said, you better, you better check on me now because one day you might take your call or your phone to call me and you discover I'm dead. It's a paraphrase. So, but. It's good to check on the people that you know, people that you love. Call them every once in a while, check on them, give them assurances and all that because you never know what is going on through any mind. Just be nice with somebody. So when the expert comes uh, to talk on mental health, maybe she will give us more pointers on what we need to do and the uh, benefits of these mental health checks. Oh yeah, well you see in Nigeria today, um, we understand that about 60 million people mm -hmm. uh, are having mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, that's one in four Nigerians because we're talking about 206 million people. And so you're looking at about 50 to 60 million Nigerians having mental health. I uh, think that's issues. even a nice, a nice. <laughs> a nice way to put it. In Nigeria, how many people in Lagos are really, <laughs> really free of mental problems? Experts even say that everybody has some kind of percentage of mental issues. It's just that so many people don't get it triggered um, in their lifetime or triggered enough to make them uh, want to go for checkups and all that. Uh, we make it a point in Nigeria, even general health, Anytime you're going to a hospital or to visit a doctor, it has to be a critical condition before you go there. And that shouldn't be. No, the thing is in Nigeria, when you, up until recently, when mental health, mental health became a thing, perhaps because of social media, um, in Nigeria, when you mention anything that has to do with mental health, mm. you were seen as, well, Yaba left comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it quite nicely. Yaba left comes to yeah. mind, and Nigerians fear that stigmatization that yeah. comes from uh, being said to have visited Yaba left, you know, psychiatric home. Mm. And it, it really ought not to be. And I think that myth is being demystified. Nigerians are beginning to feel more comfortable talking about mental health today. Mm -hmm. And it is good that uh, we're taking a look at it because even as I'm looking at you now, Nyango, who knows? Especially since you're a resident in Lagos. <laughs> in Lagos. Was it not Nasir Arafai, the governor of uh, Kaduna State, that says anyone living, in fact, that all Lagosians who go through all the hours we go through in traffic on mm. a daily have already been to hell? Well, I don't <laughs> accept that, but, but you can say <laughs> need to check their mental health state, yeah. but not been to hell. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, and uh, if we don't go to the facility, let's try to make ourselves happy, happy enough to decide to stay alive and to stay positive in life. We'll just take a short break now. When we return, we'll, do, um, we'll look at the newspaper and see what the headlines are and have Inkotaria join us to discuss the headlines. Stay with us.